Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter at Second Swing. We're going to have Thomas hit some more drivers for us. We've got the Ping G30, the Ping G, the Ping G400, and the Ping G410, all LST models. We're going to test them out today and find out how Ping's driver technology has evolved over the past few years. Uh, so, you know, Ping, no secret, one of the uh, best manufacturers out there uh, for golf equipment. And their drivers speak for themselves. They've been terrific. Um, in fitting customers over the years, you know, what have you noticed from Ping's drivers, the LST models in particular, and uh, what do you think we'll, we'll see in this test? What I've definitely noticed, Ping drivers especially, forgiveness. Yep. Forgiveness with, with drivers, pretty much one of the best out there with regards to getting the ball to go nice and straight for my, for my players in fitting environment. Not only is the, the, the Ping G line very forgiving, but also Essentially, it is uh, very low spinning with the LST model as well. So not only you get the best of both worlds, it's a nice and straight ball flight, but also be able to get that spin rate down and get the ball to go a little bit further, mm -hmm. especially those players that do generate a lot of spin. So it's a great option for, for, mm -hmm. for that as well. Now, one of the things we always do in these tests is we try to make it as kind of unbiased, you know, fair, so to speak, as we can. So yep. how are we doing that today? Because there is a tweak we might have to make a little bit here that the, the G400 actually has different loft offerings. Uh, than the rest of them. So we have to make a little bit of a tweak there to kind of make it as unbiased as possible. Yeah, so with the uh, G30, the G, and the G410, we are all nine degree models. So they're all, all nine degree across the board. Um, Ping Tour 65X shaft. Mm -hmm. um, with the G400, there's an eight and a half degree model and a 10, 10 degree model with all. So there is no nine degree model with the G400. So what I had to do, and I got it right here, is I had to kind of put it in the little, little plus right here, which is yep. plus 0.6. So this essentially puts it at, I guess, 9.1 yeah. based on that, or what it's actually doing sometimes is it's actually slightly closing the face a little bit there too. So it's as close as we can get to make it as unbiased as we can. I know it's not gonna be a perfect perfect example, but it's yeah. about as close as we can get. Yeah, 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 that's, I mean, you know, that's what we can do here. That's yep. kind of the best way to make it as uh, close to even, so to speak, as possible. So, but I'm excited to watch this because I play a G30 uh, in my bag and I have for, what, five years now? And so I'm, I, I've been thinking about upgrading to something newer from Ping. So this will kind of be, for me, sort of a test to see, okay, is what should I upgrade to? What's the best performance at least for you? And maybe, you know, I know our swing speeds are pretty similar. So um, well, I, I'm curious to see how this plays out here. I think you might have me by a couple of miles an hour. I don't I mean, quite, I think I can quite catch you there. I think I might hit it a little bit straighter <laughs> than you do though. <laughs> well, if I could take your drives, hey, I would, yeah. so. But yeah, this is, this is exciting. Uh, I think this would be a good proceeding. Maybe we can maybe do a driver fitting for you in the future here as well. We don't, we do the iron fitting. We maybe do the driver fitting and compare the G30 compared to newer models. Well, let's yeah. see how this test goes and maybe I'll be interested in one of those, huh? Well, let's get after it right now. Okay, Thomas, looks like we'll start with the G30 LST. First of all, before we get started, you know, what is your impression of the look of that driver? And I guess, what do you expect out of this test here with the last, I guess, four generations of ping drivers? So over the last four generations, there has been kind of changes to the turbulators, I guess, on top. Alignment aid help with uh, getting the club face fast going mm -hmm. through, through, through the air. Um, for me, I've always had a hard time with the turbulators. Just for me, it looks, I'm, I'm more interested in looking down at a club that's a little cleaner, doesn't have as much yeah. kind of going on. But I do understand the concept. I understand it helps get you line yourself up a little bit easier, um, get that club face a little bit square, and also a little more aerodynamic club, club head as well. Mm -hmm. The mat look definitely looks nice. It's just I've always had a hard time with the turbulators. The turbulators, yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean, yep. I I play a G30 right now, and I've kind of really liked that mat look. Uh, I just maybe it's a, a scared thing where I, I play a glossy driver in the sun and it shines up into my face. I know, the matte look seems to, it really, I like that a lot better. So um, that's kind of why I stuck, why, stuck with a, a G30 for so long. Okay. But uh, now we'll get to see the real test here, see how uh, the G30 has stood up against the test of time and against uh, other miles after it. So Sounds good. turned over that one turned over okay Thomas that was five shots of the G30 LST um, 
you know, there was a couple that hung out to the right there, and then one you really turned over at that left, uh, on the left of that last ball there. But overall, I thought the efficiency was pretty solid. I mean, you're at 1.5 for a lot of those. Overall, 1.49 was the smash factor. Spin rate, 23.89. So I think that was kind of fluctuated quite a bit there. It had it maybe did. in the high 2000s, and then yep. I think there was actually one sub-2000. Um, but initial impressions, G30 LST, what do you think? Yeah, there was one miss hit there that spun about 3,000. The rest were all kind of in the low 2,000s. The first four swings, I had a hard time, a little bit more with a more of a right ball going on with it. And I think the last one, I really worked hard to get it to yeah. get it left because I just don't like that shot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, but for me, looking down at the face, it does look like it just sits just a little bit flatter. It is a little bit more of a kind of a fade bias model mm -hmm. as opposed to you know your SFT model yeah. would be, um, but. Had a little harder time with the right ball, I guess. But, I mean, I felt like I hit it pretty good. Felt good. Just felt like it was a little low penetrating fade. That's yeah. kind of what I was hitting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's what the, the map shows. That's what the trajectory shows. And the spin was actually somewhat down, you know, for, um, you know, we talked about some of the older models maybe still are up there in spin, especially when there's a miss hit. Uh, 2389 is more or less the prime spin number that you're looking for out of the driver. So, Good start here for Ping. Uh, I know you want to maybe straighten that out a little bit, but we'll see if we can do that with the G, the, the Ping G here. Sounds good. First takeaway here, I'm just looking at the dispersion map here, is the distance dispersion is extremely tight with the Ping G LST here. Uh, it's, I mean, the n most narrow red oval there for that <laughs> I've ever seen out of a driver out of five shots. So that's, that's impressive right there. Um, what did you think of the look and the feel of that compared to the G30? I know they've, they're still sticking with that kind of matte finish and the turbulators there. Is there any change there? There's like gradual Turbulators is added to it, I guess. A little bit more kind of towards the, the okay. back of the crown. You can see these ridges just yeah. kind of a little bit more. With the G30, it was just kind of the, the four or five marks up here. Now you've got kind of the gradual mm -hmm. okay. uh, gradual amount of, I don't know how I would put it, I guess. <laughs> there's <laughs> just kind of there's more like going an, on. More going on, exactly. <laughs> there's just a little bit more going on as we can change from the G30 to the, the Ping G. A uh, little... I, I like the look of this club head a little bit better than I like the G30. This just seems more rounded. Um, mm -hmm. okay. One thing I did notice when I was hitting it, it seemed like it was pretty consistent on the spin rate as well. Um, yes. So, I mean, we can, why don't we just go through each spin number here? Okay. So we got 2487, 2349, 2350. So that's 2349, 20, literally yep. one RPM uh, a difference there. Then 2202, then 2461. So, I mean, you're. Sign me up. That's pretty, <laughs> That's pretty darn consistent, consistent right yeah. there. That, yeah. It doesn't get much more consistent yeah. uh, from the driver there. So uh, that's pretty impressive right there. The carry number was 284.1, total distance 308.7. Uh, so each of those are slightly about four to five yards further than the G30 LST. And I think really that's only due to a little bit faster club speed at about a half mile an hour faster because your smash factor for both is 149. So okay. uh, that's you know, that's really solid right there. I know those are really rivaling those numbers that you get um, really with the modern drivers that we've tested and that you've hit for us. Yeah, I hit both of them solid, just a little bit more of a left to right curve that I'm kind of used to yeah. with my driver. That's the only thing I can notice. Yeah, that's the one thing I was gonna I was gonna mention too, is I know you don't love that left to right ball flight, but uh, the numbers here anyway are, are, are pretty darn solid and that consistency is too. So with that said, let's, uh, let's move into the G400 here. Okay. I like this driver. <laughs> okay, Thomas, the G400, that was pretty solid right there. Uh, it was really good. I mean, yeah. those numbers, those spin numbers, the I know it, it turned over left a little bit more for you than the G. That's, it's gonna be tough for the G410 to beat here. 
It is. These, these are pretty good numbers, and I love the ball flight. I was talking about with the uh, the G30 and the G, how I was just leaving it out to ride a little bit. Yeah. This one, was, I was able to turn over just a little bit easier. It did not go to the right for me, which is very important for me because I hate that mm -hmm. right ball. So, right. Yep. Um, what I do want to bring up, though, is the interesting with Ping, with the G400, there is no 9 degree LST model. Mm -hmm. So this is the 8.5 degree head. So it is half a degree less laugh on it. What we did to make this a fair test. So fair or unfair, depending on the way you look at it, you know, it is as comparable as we probably could get for a head-to-head -head test. Yeah. But what that does is it does slightly close that face a little bit when you're adding a little laugh to a club. Yep. That could be partially the reason why I was going to get it a little bit more to the, to the left there too. But I love the look of it at address. For me, I feel like I wasn't going to miss it as far to the right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if that face angle was close just a tad, um, you know, it did show a little bit here. But the dispersion, at least distance-wise, again, just phenomenal. That tiny little oval there, you know, for those looking on the screen, the purple and the red are the last two clubs that he's hit, that G400, the purple oval here. Um, that's a tremendous distance dispersion, very consistent. And then, you know, looking at the numbers here, uh, the G400 did spin a little bit less, uh, ever so slightly. So we started with G30, that was 2389. The G was 2370, and then the G400 dropped to 2238. So okay. slowly, gradually dropping that spin, the distance for the G400 uh, also increased, you know, 284.7 carry, 312.2 average total. 149 smash all the way through with all three clubs. So Ping with their drivers last few years, very efficient, very uh, powerful and explosive and keeping that spin down as well. So now we get to see G410 and see how they can possibly top this. Yeah, this was a good one. It's gonna be interesting to see how they can kind of compare as well. Mm -hmm. uh, touching on the look here a little bit too, once again, turbulators just look a little bit more kind of pronounced yeah. as we kind of go through these models. So Interesting. Maybe good. adding a little bit more to it throughout the years, right? Yep, it's a little bit more to it. All right, well, let's get to the G410. Okay. All right, the G410 LST. Uh, looking at quickly at dispersion here, G410 is the farthest down the fairway and perhaps the straightest. So you got that going for us here already with the G410. Um, looking at the numbers, the spin did increase a little bit mm -hmm. with the G410 LST, uh, but with that said, the carry distance was the highest. So you got guys that got a little bit more far, farther down the fairway that it was staying in the air right versus yep. um, running it out to 307 yards is at the average distance there. So. Um, Thomas, you know, you'll, you'll get a full breakdown of the numbers here shortly, but just the look and feel of that driver and then kind of initial impressions watching that ball fly, what do you think? So look-wise, I'll say it again, as I've seen this transition on from um, kind of the, the Ping G30 to the G to the G400 to now the G410, more pronounced turbulators, yeah. definitely bolder, more bolder lines, can mm -hmm. kind of see it there. But I will say I'm growing on it because I did not hit it offline with the club. So I yeah. was able to hit the ball very, very straight. And boy, was it forgiving as well because I feel like I didn't make the best swings on those last five swings with this one, but it flew nice and straight for me too. Yeah. So I think this is probably one of the most forgiving low spin models out there in the market in 2020 really? for sure. Yeah, Yeah, because I mean, looking at the, the numbers, the smash factor did drop, you know, had 149 the first three and then yep. 147 with this one. So you're right about your contact not being maybe as in the center of the club yep. face. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I mean, with that said, again, look at this map and it's as straight as any of them, if not straighter than the rest of the three models and the farthest down the fairway. So yeah. that, that does show some of the technology, the forgiveness that is packed in the G410. So um, with that said, we can maybe uh, hand over the, the data to you, uh, the fitter, and get your perspective here a little bit more in depth. Let's do it. Okay, Thomas, G410 LST just wrapped up hitting here. Um, you've got all the data there from all four drivers. What jumps out at you? What jumps out at me was the how straight that I hit the G410 and how straight I hit the, the, the Ping G as well. Those two were the two straightest mm -hmm. with regards to dispersion. So I'm looking at the, the green circle. I'll expand this here. The green circle and the red circle, those were very, very consistent, nice and straight. 
Um, and also on top of that, with the Ping G, the 2016 was spin consistency was pretty pretty solid there. I think we kind of talked about it briefly. It was maybe plus or minus 100 RPMs. Yeah. And that's kind of across the entire board too with all the models. So that's something that definitely stood out for me is we have tested other different models, other different manufacturers doing the same kind of test. And I, what I've noticed is the spin rate with this test has been pretty consistent from about 2300 to about 2500 across the board with mm -hmm. all, all the models there as well, which is kind of interesting to see. So the older models do spun pretty low in the, in the right area, area for me there as well. Um, dis touching on dispersion as well, uh, one thing I did notice with the G400 is I was able to turn that one over the easiest. Yeah. So looking at the purple circle, everything was just left of the center line. All the others were kind of right down the middle or just right mm -hmm. on the center line there too. I think that might be related to that a slight little adjustment that we had right. to make on the driver there. Eight and a half, put up 0 .06 yep. to try and get it as close as we can. What that's doing is slightly closing the face a little bit there too. Um, if we look at the numbers, I'm just curious to see what my club face was like at impact with that one. So it was the most closed out of the most. The face to path was minus 1.1. Everything else was positive one to two, essentially. And there was a couple of degrees more close than the others. Right. So let's just close the board to kind of go a little bit to the left there, there as well. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, my club speed with all of them, 110 to 112. So very, very consistent yeah. with, with this test there as well. The fastest ball speed also was the Ping G400 as well. Um, kind of interesting there to see that. And also it was the lowest spinning because the ball was kind of going yeah. a little to the left there mm -hmm. with, with that one there too. It did go the furthest total distance. But the club that did go the furthest carry distance was the G410. Yeah. Uh, it was flying pretty straight, and as I kind of mentioned, right. I, feel I wasn't maybe swinging those last few swings as good, but it's so forgiving and yeah. so easy to hit. Uh, it's, yeah, right. it's for a low spinning model out there in, on the market. It, it really impressed me. So. See, yeah, the one thing that I take note of just from my brief look at those those numbers was I know how much you preach carry distance, kind of over total distance, just because of. You know the conditions can vary on the course maybe on a wetter uh, more moist uh, fairway if it's damp you're not going to get that run out that maybe trackman gives you here so yep. if you want to carry that bunker that's 270 out there you want to be able to do that um, the carry distance with the g410 was the farthest uh, down the fairway uh, your dispersion there maybe the straightest that or the g but it was not your most efficient swings oh, correct. so which yep. again like you've mentioned the forgiveness there uh, this thing, it works. I mean, it, it works. You know, you're, you weren't swinging it the best, but it performed the best. Yeah, speaking of efficiency, my smash factor with the, th the first three models, so with the G30, the G, and the G400 was 1.49. Not much, too much rumor for improvement there. Right. With the G410 LST model, it was 147. So I was pretty accurate to say that I wasn't hitting it quite as solid, but it was still going, doing what I was, yeah. what was asking for it to do. Mm -hmm. So that stands out to me there for sure. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. The Ping driver lineup past few years has been tremendous. Uh, no secret here, and we definitely showed it today with this test. Thomas has hit uh, all four of these low spin technology LST drivers. The numbers show that uh, really any of them uh, are great options for your bag. The G410 here, uh, that forgiveness really kind of uh, was a solid standing point there at the end. Uh, a great showing of forgiveness there towards the end. So uh, any of these Ping drivers, if you are in the market for an LST low spin driver, uh, the Ping models here, the G30, the G, the G400, and the G410 are four great options for you to get into your bag, help you hit the ball farther and straighter down the fairway and uh, lower your scores. So Thomas, thank you for hitting the shots, providing the insight as a fitter.